my name is John Cogley, and I'm the owner, president, and CEO of Daniel Smith. Uh, when I started, I was information systems, we called it back then. So that gave me a huge amounts of knowledge about how the company worked, how departments interacted with each other, um, what the product was, um, et cetera. So it was, it was a fascinating and fan, um, good learning experience. The, uh, back in that time, I was uh, able to work with uh, manufacturing in the summer. And uh, we were making um, traditional oils, which, you know, linseed oil. And the linseed oil would get hot and it would be the smell of linseed oil, which I absolutely love. Um, I heard that clink clink of the machinery. And I just thought, you know, this is a wonderful place. I get to see color all day. I get to hear machines. People are having fun. Um, and that was kind of my uh, immersion into Daniel Smith as a company. And then uh, when I was working in the stores, I'd hear customers come in. It wasn't just customers coming in. It was customers coming in with stories. And I'd hear the retail people interact with them. And there'd always be this, you know, I'm painting there. So how would I do that? And what would you suggest for this? And it was just interesting to hear this, this phenomenal dialogue. And it just made me really, really, really love this company. And to be more than just work up in my IS area. Um, cause at that time I was shutting down jobs at one o'clock in the morning, um, trying to beat the people in customer service before they came in and started the day. And, um, it was just, it was nice to be around people and the energy that artists and, uh, and they have, I love color as doing photography. A lot of my photography was always about doing things which were vibrant, um, seeing a, a different way, a different perspective to take, um, photos, uh, my time in manufacturing, watch the coloring on the mills. Um, now it's working with my chief chemist in coming up with new product, um, looking at new pigments. Um, it's I've the pigments and, and what the pigments can do because color always color starts and really stops with the pigment. Um, it's always been the most fascinating journey for me. It's a craft and it's a very very complex craft. I would be telling people, for example, if I'm doing a presentation, the difference between um, PB29, which is pigment blue 29, which is ultramarine and French ultramarine, is just the size of the pigment. It's exactly the same pigment. It's just the pigment size that allows it to either be warm or cool. So it's not about just throwing something on a three-row mill and milling it. It's about the love. It's about constantly testing it to, to make sure it's going to meet the expectation of the artist. And I, I love the, uh, the intricate process of it. I think what sets us apart is a couple of things. One, it's wanting to have a relationship with the artist saying, how, how is what we do? How could it be used to allow you, the artist, to convey your ideas, your thought process? Assess and get what you want out of your artwork. So it's, it's looking at starting with the artist. And then from there, using the best materials to make that come true for the artist. The most important thing is to hear the little bell ring to say a customer's entered your area. And then how do you help them? And uh, you can see that by going to any Opus store. We are both customer focused. I think when we first started, when Dan first started, he started in his garage. Um, it wasn't so much about colors because back then we were making, it was for lithography, it was for etching. Um, it was about making a very, very good product that would meet the expectations of the printmaker. Um, so nowhere near as much colors as we do today for our oils or for certainly for our watercolors. Um, when we developed and started with uh, watercolors, it was coming out with a, a very strong um, group of colors any artist could use. And then from there, adding more, um, more intricate, more um, uh, interesting colors and pure. So if you wanted a, um, a single pigment, you, we would have that in a tube. You didn't necessarily have to mix if you didn't want to mix. Uh, I'm often asked, for example, what is the most popular color? And when I used to have my stores, it was an easy one. It would be, for example, quinacridone gold. But now it's, okay, tell me what part of the world. Because artists tend to see, for the most part, uh, the world around them. 
So if you're in uh, parts of South America, it might be browns. If you're in Asia, it might be greens. So it depends on where in the world you're at that makes can make colors popular for that area. So the blooming part, uh, many of our colors will allow for, you know, the earth colors will allow for beautiful leaves. Um, the greens make beautiful, you know, foliage. Um, for blooming, can also use colors that bloom, you know, that that actually will, will, will go out that look beautiful or granulating colors. Um, so yeah, there, there's absolutely, it's, uh, there's all different colors that will allow that to, or for you to be able to do that. One thing that we pride ourselves on, because color is all about pigment and light, um, we're constantly choosing the best absolute pigments that we can find. Um, that allows for your painting not to be muddy. You have more versatility. You can do more layers without creating mud. Um, it allows for having that many colors allows for expression. I'm, I'm, you know, my mother, for example, would pick eight colors. And when I go all over the world, I'll sit in front of a display and people say, oh, you know, that's my favorite color. And I say, well, so what will you do with that? And they'll say, well, I'm going to do this and this. And I look and I say, that is an opaque color. When you pick an opaque color, you're already at the end of your story. Because if you're watercolors, you're always going from light to dark. And once you hit dark, you're done. And I'm saying, are you sure you want that one? You know, you may actually want this one because you can do three other layers on top of it because it's semi-transparent. And um, it, it's, it's when you look at the color chart, I think that answers your question. It gives the versatility for the artist. You can choose whether you're going to use a granulating color or a non-granulated color. There's a reason we have nine yellows. Some are opaque, some are transparent, some are trans semi-transparent. Some stain, some don't stain. It gives the artist the versatility to accomplish what they want to do. And it's always been my philosophy and our philosophy, philosophy <laughs> to put the artist in control of the product, not the product in control of the artist. And I, and I think that that's what makes us highly different. I have a team. I have a, a art chief chemist and an R&D chemist. And they'll look at, we get pigments from um, all over, probably on a weekly basis. Uh, if I wanted to have 10,000 colors, I could have 10,000 colors. Um, there's, there's just always new pigment coming in, but it has to meet and it has to offer something different. You know, to have a new blue that does something one of our blues already does, it, it has no value, right? So, you know, we'll test everything, but we bring out very few colors because they have to offer something different. As an artist, you're super important to me. My people are ultimately important to me. I don't have a business without them. So if I'm watching always what's in their best interest, I'm watching what's in your best interest. So all of our product is tested. We have environmental friendly pigments. We have three of them. And they're the same pigments I can buy um, from another pigment manufacturer and they would cost me less. The reason I buy those and it costs a little bit more um, is this is a company that goes out and cleans rivers and streams and they're able to use the difference between what they're selling it to me for and what I could buy it for to do the next stream cleaning. And so I think that's really important. It's kind of giving back. And so we've done that for the last 15 years and they're beautiful colors. They're absolutely gorgeous colors and they give back. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a win-win. The majority of pigments have a story unto themselves. They were either used by the masters or they're like ochres or siennas or like our primatex, um, which ancient people found in riverbeds. Back when we were making uh, oils, uh, we hadn't started making watercolors yet. A gentleman came in and showed Dan some lapis and said, you know, do you want this lapis? And, and Dan thought, well, he must want to sell it to me. And so he said, I'm sorry, but, but I don't use that material. And, and the guy said, you know, I'm a lapidary and I've been keeping this lapis forever and I have five buckets of it and I'll give it to you. I just want to kind of, you know, pay it forward. You think you can use it? Dan said, well, yeah, that'd be very kind of you. And, and sure, I'll try. I'll try to see if it would work. And it was the first mineral that we used in our oil paints. It was also the first one that we used in our watercolors. And to me, that was um, lapis has been around for over 4,000 years. I just came back from Egypt and you can see it, the Egyptians used it. I mean, it's been used everywhere. It, it shows um, ancient trade routes because you can follow the lapis. And I thought that was wonderful that he wanted to 
pay it for the, 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 the person that was doing the lapidary. It was, it was so neat. And primitex tell a story. To me, the story they tell is, and pr primitech means primitive technology, is no matter what part of the world I've been to, I've been to five, uh, five continents, um, there's always ancient artwork. And people have always wanted to show what they see in front of them, whether it's a cave wall, whether it's you know pyramids, any continent, there's early artists. And they use what they found in riverbeds, et cetera. So to me, the Primatex show the story of art, you know, and through time, which is which is super, super wonderful. So they really have my heartstrings. And if I was thinking about a synthetic, it would be the ultramarine blue, which is the synthetic form of lapis. You know, it's to me, it's a very simple color, but it's a very beautiful color. But as a, a series of colors that tell a story, it'd be the Primatex. They tell a wonderful story. They tell the story of mankind, people kind, and, and artists throughout time. I would say community is probably one of the most important things. Nothing beats the community of sharing one-to-one. -one. You know, life is about people, right? I mean, we, we start with people. I, I, I don't have widgets that work for me. I have people that work for me. So, and, and that to me, that's the fun. It's, the fun is people. I just want to say thank you for any and all of you that use Daniel Smith product. It's the reason that keeps me in business. And I'm so very, very grateful. Thank you so very, very much.